But just know this, when we speak about mental health, there's only two people I'm really speaking to. One, you may be around somebody who's going through a mental health crisis and just pick it up, like go with your gut. Just, Ooh, that, that didn't sound right. You know, you'd be better off without me. Giving stuff away, you're looking for these signs and we'll, we'll put the warning signs in the show notes. You may be around someone. The other person I speak to, it may be you. It may be you. You gotta be mindful of what you're going through. Hey, Dennis, glad to have you here with us today. Well, Spencer, thank you for having me. Mal, thank you for joining and uh, thank you for taking on this tough topic. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a tough one and um, but a very, very important one. And I figured we can kind of kick things off with having you tell just a little bit of your your background and your story and why why you're so passionate about educating people on this topic. Sure. And it's really interesting to think about it. All your other podcasts have been about build or funnel, you know, developing leads. And this is a good one to go introspective on. It's um, we're talking about mental health. And I became a mental health advocate after I got an accounting degree, which makes no sense. Um, <laughs> so I want to tell people right off the bat, I'm not a psychologist. I, I'm not a psychiatrist. I was a guy bopping through life when two major events occurred and altered my trajectory. Uh, the first happened while I was in college. I was um, at West Virginia University, junior year, and it was one of those weeks where you have a test in every subject. And it was a Wednesday. I remember it was like yesterday. My sister Janice called, and I'm one of five kids. And she said, uh, Janice told me on the phone, she goes, Dennis, you need to come home. I'm eight hours from home. And she says, you need to come home. Mark died in a car accident. That's what they told me. You guys know I'm a mental health advocate. Mark battled depression for years battled it and the disease state won and mark was gone mark died by suicide he died in a car but it was no accident so i think i'm doing okay after that i get out of college in four years and eight weeks because i took summer session i was drinking way too much that's for sure hiding it's a negative coping skill hiding some of the pain and so was my little brother matthew Remember, I told you about the Gillen Five earlier. There's Sheila, Mark, now in heaven, me, Janice, and Matthew. And we never talked about Mark after he died. We really didn't. We just put it in a box and put it away. And I unfortunately put him away. And 11 years after I lost Mark, the phone rings again. I'm married. I'm living in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. I'm doing everything I think I should be doing. I got out of school, have a good job. And the phone rings and Janice again, Unfortunately for Janice, every time she calls me now to this day, my heart skips a beat. She calls me to tell you that my younger brother, Matthew, in a drunken stupor with access to lethal means, he also took his life. So that's two. So of the three boys, I'm the last one standing. This Sheila and Janice still with us. So it's just, that's how I became a mental health advocate. And for years, I didn't talk about it. The fact that we're doing this today, guys, is unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't even talk about Madam Mark, but um, a couple of years ago, I spoke at a fundraiser and someone said, you're pretty good at that. And I'm like, no, I'm not. You heard, <laughs> you heard, you heard the one and only show I'm ever going to talk about my brothers because I can't talk about them without crying. For sure. And eventually I, I've been on this path now and ended up in uh, speaking about suicide prevention and going upstream talking about mental health because I don't want to talk about suicide prevention. I want to remove the stigma of mental health. So we, people don't come downstream to where I, where I live now. So we go upstream and it landed me, believe it or not, in the construction world, in the building world. 78% of all completed suicides are guys. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but the construction industry is heavily guys. Builders seem to be guys. A lot more women do design and other stuff and getting into it, which is really cool. But for the most part, it's a, it's a dude's industry. And so you take a, a male dominated industry, you take this male dominated phenomenon that is suicide, 78%, which is one out of what? That's two out of five, if I'm doing my math. Uh, yeah, uh, you said 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 80%, 
uh, the construction industry is number one for occupations that have high suicide rates. Yeah. And do you know why, why that is, Dennis? There's a couple theories. You know, all suicides are multifactorial, but let's go back to the male-dominated industry. High use of opioids, hmm. uh, painkillers, high use. Um, also, there's a seasonality to work sometimes. You're, when you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. There's also a cowboy mentality. If you are hurt, work through it. Suck it up, buttercup. Mm-hmm. We're doing this. Um, there's also, I'm not sure I, it's, it's true, but lack of sometimes training in the management level. Some guys get promoted and we all, every industry can do better at that. You know, you get promoted and uh, maybe outside your, your, your realm um, of expertise and they don't know what to look for. And guys don't like to talk about this stuff, period. So the, the, the construction industry popped really high. The average rate, the average, they do it per 100,000. Is 14.2 per 100,000 nationwide. The construction industry, 53.2. Wow. Hello. Yikes, Yikes yeah. is right. So a um, lot of work to do, but the fact that they brought me in, they bring other speakers in, they, they're, they're addressing it. They're not hiding. And that's, that's, I've seen a huge change in that over the last 10 years. So I'm proud of the construction industry you know, from getting away from that stoic, you know, old school, you know, attitude and saying, we got to address this. And they are. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, a really good thing. And I, I guess I'm curious, you said you wanted to shift the discussion from suicide prevention to mental health. Um, maybe I'm uneducated there. Why, why is that an important shift to, to make? Well, if you, if you look at the suicide prevention industry uh, as a whole, and if it's an industry, it's the movement, there used to be a statistic. Everyone said 90% of all completed suicides, they had some form, the people who died had some form of, you know, undiagnosed or untreated mental illness. So everyone said, we got to go upstream. We got to go upstream. There's another component to this. The CDC came out and said that 54% of the folks have some more trauma. So something happened in their past. And I'm not going to get bogged down in the weeds. I don't care how you got to that area of desperation. Uh, But I do want to go, back up and like if we can go back up again using the term you know upstream and say it's okay to say i'm not okay let's pick it off early uh let's 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 you know let's man up and say you know this strength and vulnerability and say man i'm not doing so hot and here you know and and, and address it uh there's no shame in that so we're really going to kick the stigma of mental health to the curb um and I think we're doing a good job. I think the pandemic has taught us to talk about this because there's an extra layer of stress that none of us signed up for in 2020. Uh, I remember I spoke, the last speaking gig I had was like March 7th. And this sounds like three years ago. Yeah, uh, it feels like forever ago. <laughs> 2020 is doing this to us. And I spoke March 7th and then the world shut down March 14th here. You know, it's like, and I've been on the road since. So it's, 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 it's wearing on us. So, um, and your industry, by the way, you builders, and you know, this There's a, another layer the pandemic, you know, some people seem to be investing and we, you know, I just got off doing another thing for remodelers investing in their homes, but there's also pressure that comes with being a builder schedules, budget quality. I share a building with a couple folks. I'm going to share it off space here and a couple of builders, roofers, there's always deadlines. There's always something. <laughs> they never, it seems like they never have an easy day, right? Are you guys finding that? There's always something. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is a high pressure, you know, industry, like you said, and, and male dominated, I guess. Um, I'm curious, you know, you said, you know, we need to make it okay to just talk about this stuff, I guess. Um, for people that maybe the default is it's not okay. Uh, I guess, what are some warning signs or what, like if you are observing people, um, I guess, what's a good way to start observing that there may be some issues either for yourself or for people that you know, and, and then do you have any good strategies for bridging that conversation? Because as you said, it hasn't been kind of a, a topic that people bring up or you have the tendency to just keep things internal. Oh yeah. Great question. Some of the, uh, you know, the, obviously risk factors, high use of drugs and alcohol, you know, and I, when I'm on the road, 
when I was on the road, it was funny because I often shared hotels with construction crews. And it was not uncommon. One time I was holding the door open at a holiday inn to this guy and he's pushing in one of those carts, you know, you put your clothes on, he's got you know, your luggage. This cart is full of alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, you're going to be popular when you get where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> they work hard, they play hard. Yes. That's the nature of the business. They just do. They, you know, they, they are, they, they're, they're early, crack of dawn, you need them. Um, and then when they punch out, they really punch out. Um, so look for warning signs, excessive use of, you know, mind altering substances, uh, pulling away and withdrawing. Guys, we do this. Sometimes we go into our man cave. If something's bugging us, how you doing? I'm fine. And you won't say anything else. Pulling away. Uh, so you look at, you know, three buckets of warning signs of talk, behavior, and mood. Obviously, someone's talking about it. They're doing us all a favor. Say, oh, you guys would be better off without me. They're doing us a huge favor. They're tipping their hat. And then, True. Then, yeah. Yeah, that's a tell. If we're playing poker, that's a tell. And I'm going to address that behavior. You know, uh, for me, uh, if I'm stressed out, my sleep goes to crap. And I see that a lot with builders too. And uh, construction crews, those schedules they're on, sleep goes out the window for me. And I did listen to this neuroscientist. I'm going to give you your listeners three tips on sleep. This is free today. <laughs> the room has to be dark. So I sleep with a, an eye mask. Because when I'm on the road, when I was on the road, those hotels, they light them up like Christmas trees. The room has to be cold. Mm -hmm. And now it's getting cold out, which is good, fall. So you can open a window, but sometimes you open a window, you hear your neighbor's dog, right? Yep. So they also some kind of white noise machine. Those three things, I've implemented those three things in my life, dark, cold, and some kind of noise that I don't hear. White noise, I have the app on my phone. That's helped me sleep immensely you know, on the road and in the home as well. So- yeah. And the other one is mood, uh, talk behavior mood. We're talking about warning signs. Someone's mood is up and down. Um, and the other one that was odd, when I, I worked on the suicide prevention hotline, part of my recovery from the loss of Matt and Mark, um, one of them says suddenly happy or calmer. That was one of the tips too. Like if someone's suddenly happy or calmer, like they're manic on Monday, but Tuesday they're fine. They made a plan. You gotta, you gotta intervene on something like that. So- huh, That's interesting. I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, yeah I, that one- blew me away. And, and then I ran into a guy um, who lost his brother uh, to suicide. And his, he, he would tell me, his brother would tell him, everything's fine. Everything's great. Perfect. Work's going good. And none of it was going good. He was faking it um, to get his older brother off his um, trail. So those things, look at talk, behavior, mood, and we could pare it down, guys, real simple. We have They say we have three brains based on nerve endings, one in our head, obviously, one in our heart, one in our gut. You got to go with your gut sometimes. You got to know when something's off. You just got to step in and don't be afraid to say something. And what, what can you say? If someone's going through a lot of stuff, you say, hey, dude, you have a lot on your plate. Someone in your position may be thinking about suicide. Are you thinking about suicide? And then you, all of a sudden you come around to their side of the table. You got a lot going on. Hey, you, I understand you have a little trouble at home. I get it. We've all been there. Uh, finances, you know, we're hot, hot. When we're not, we're not in the building world. I get it. There's just come around and say, you got a lot going on. Someone in your shoes may be thinking about suicide. Are you thinking about suicide? And you have to say it. And you guys are both looking at me We're on Zoom, but for the podcast, these guys are both giving me that, you know, the fuzzy eyeball. You have to be able to say the S word. And the S word is suicide. And you got to be comfortable saying it. And then the other one I use every time, I, are you okay? And then I pause and then I go, really? You know, <laughs> are you okay, comma? Really? Because if we say it right now, how you doing, Dennis? I'm living the dream. How you doing? I'm living the dream. Yeah, you know, really? Nightmare? Yeah, really? <laughs> really? It's really? <laughs> really, Dennis? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, no, those are those are great strategies. Yeah, go ahead, Mal. Yeah, then, Dennis, let me ask you. It's I, I think it's always in my head, and then it's definitely often in, in people's heads more generally. I don't want to ask someone, like, are you really doing okay? Because there's that fear that they're kind of kind of respond negatively, you know, kind of like you're being nosy. Like, that's what I know I'm always worried about. So is, is that is that usually the kind of response you would get? Like, if you go up to someone and you're like, how are you doing really? How do they tend to respond to you after that? Typically done in private. You know, you don't do it publicly like you're, you're sure. a bunch of guys sitting around. It's like, hey, dude, come here. I want to talk to you. And then, dude. Mal, if you come from a place of love, you could, you could blow me up. I, 
all you want. I'm coming from a place, dude, I love you. And I've said that now, and that's a weird thing to say now for guys. I love you. I, I call them all my friends now when I hang up the phone. Dude, I love you. Love you too, man. It, if you come from that place of love, they could light you up like a Christmas tree. It wouldn't bother me. So I don't care what you say. And especially if they do, Mal, that may be a tip too. If they really blow up at me, like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's really going on here? Uh -huh. um, it doesn't seem to bother me. And it's like everything else is the 10,000 hours. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, sure. Just, just be able to put it out there. I don't, I'd rather you say something and be embarrassed than be a pallbearer. And, and then go down that path. Sure. I'd rather yeah. Be yeah. That's, that's a good point. I mean, you get through the, maybe the awkward conversation cause you don't have the practice or you're not, you know, used to asking those questions or like you said, saying, you know, suicide and just saying that out loud can feel really awkward for people. And, and especially if, you know, you're going up to somebody that, you know, you wouldn't normally think that's, you know, going on or thoughts that are going through their head. But to your point, better to, to bridge that and maybe have them go, no, like this, you know, and, and everything's fine. Like that's a much better path to go down. And there's some people out there that worry about if I say it, I'm going to plant the seed in their head. That's been disproven a million times over. Um, and, and if they are, if they truly are thinking about it, they may be relieved that someone picked up the vibe they were putting down and say, all right, you know, dude, I'm in a really dark spot. Well, dude, I'm here with you. And here's the thing I learned on the helpline too. Don't offer fixes because we're, we're guys, we always do this, you know, uh, you know, we go, oh man, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm struggling and things at home aren't good and my finances are, aren't good. You go, hey, you need to make more money. <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, just boom, solved. <laughs> hey, thank you, Captain Obvious. That helped. <laughs> just listen, well, not, listen non-judgmentally is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Well, that's a classic guy move anyway, with, uh, whenever you're talking to gals too. And the, you know, it's like, just, just listening and talking through it is, is better. <laughs> take, take your fix it hat off. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, well uh, then it's, uh, yeah, go Mal. Sorry, Spencer. Um, you're good. So you were touching on how, like, as long as you're talking to friends and you're asking them how they're really doing and you're coming from a place of love, odds are they'll be pretty re uh, receptive to it. Um, but what I'm wondering is if we're not just thinking about people we really know, maybe we're not just talking about our siblings, maybe we're not talking about our best friends, but maybe like coworkers or someone you don't know as well, and you're seeing some warning signs in them, how do you approach the conversation differently if it's someone that maybe you're not as close to? That's a good question, Mal. And, and it, I was articulating that, I, I, in my head I was saying I wouldn't approach it any differently. Um, I like to think I love everybody, uh, unless you cut me off in traffic, then we might have a difference of opinion. Yeah, then you're off. Yeah. <laughs> Die. No, um, no, I would, it's still, a, it's still a very awkward conversation with a loved one or, you know, a coworker, but it's still a conversation of paramount importance. Uh, there was a, I'll tell you a story. There was a girl I know, and this is through the construction industry, uh, that had to go to a funeral for a coworker and she got there and she told the family a story. She goes, oh, I'm sorry for your loss. And it was a suicide. And she goes, oh, she was battling so hard. I, I even know, you know, I was working with her. I even know she was going to therapy and none of the family knew she was going to therapy. The coworker knew. Wow. Oh. This is a story she's carried for 40 years. She knows, she remembers this. And see, sometimes as a coworker, we're with them six, seven, eight, nine, ten builders. Come on, twelve hours a day when the sun's up, you know, or we put lights on in the house and we're, we're fixing it. Um, uh, we're, you're worth them maybe more than their family, so you're in a really unique position. That's why workplace suicide prevention is so important. You may pick up a clue that the family had no clue about. So the the conversations I think more important when you're spending six to eight hours with somebody. You're going to see stuff. You're going to see them at the highest high and the lowest lows. We've all worked in different organizations. You know, we've all seen the meltdown and we've all seen the, you know, the happy day in the birthday room, you know, with the cake, your birthday, everyone has cake. Everyone's in a good mood, but you also see someone at their, at their worst. That's a good point. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Why would you, I guess, why would you approach it differently if, if there's a good strategy for just 
being direct and and just have like you got to bridge the conversation somehow is kind of what I'm taking away from this and and just jumping right in and doing it in as comfortable a way as you can and from a from a place of love then you know you you've opened the door it sounds like to that conversation and I get it Mal it's a tough conversation I've been through a lot of training on this stuff I've actually have life experience I've worked on the helpline so for me does a verbal I'll just do it it's going to be rough I get it it's it's not the easiest conversation to have. I totally get it. So your point was well taken. Hey, coworker, how are you? Hey, Jim, you having a good day? I noticed some things about, you know, are you okay? That's a tough one, but please have it. From the bottom of my heart, I want you all to have it. And in the construction industry, I told you guys, you know, they're doing some good things. They have actually had this, if you need resources, there's a uh, preventconstructionsuicide.com. They actually started a website to help people if you're looking to, co you know, maybe you could approach a co-work with some of the resources. Uh, the bean counters came through the Construction Financial Management Association, CFMA, started years ago taking on suicide. I've done a couple events for them and they've actually, I think they've broken off and started this whole preventconstructionsuicide.com, like a, a separate entity. Um, so you may be able to go there and your listeners may be able to go there and we'll link it, all that good stuff so they can look at the resources to help because you're right, Mal, it's a tough conversation. Yeah, that's great. We'll, we'll put that in the show notes too. We'll get that from you, Dennis. And um, I guess like I'm trying to, I'm asking this question for me, but also trying to put myself in kind of our listener shoes. Whenever I'm listening to something like this, it's maybe, um, you know, a little uncomfortable or it's a topic we're not used to talking about. And um, you're a big advocate for this. Um, I guess I'm always curious about like, what are the takeaways for us in our like day-to-day -day lives? You know, you, you mentioned some of the warning signs that we should look for. And then obviously starting those conversations, are there other things that we can do? Like what's your vision for kind of spreading awareness and, you know, how can we help? How can our, our listeners help in um, kind of doing our parts in our day-to-day -day lives? Well, Spencer and Mal, you've already helped by bringing me on your podcast. We, you know, that was something maybe 10, five, 10 years ago, we wouldn't even talk about. You've already bridged that gap. And I think sure. generationally, uh, I have two boys. I think they're really cool talking about it. My dad, God rest his soul, we couldn't talk about the boys in front of dad. He, he was hurting. So we're getting more and more comfortable talking about this. And we keep just going to keep chipping away. We're, we're pushing a rock up a hill. Um, at one point, though, we'll get to the top of the hill, and that's called the tipping point. And I think the pandemic pushed us there. Uh, the tipping point is when you get something like a chair, so you get to, just have to nudge it, and it goes. So again, back to that visual, the rock at the top, we just got to go like this. The pandemic has said it's okay to say I'm not okay. It's, it's brought it to light. It's, it's sped up a lot of things. There's, you know, we're all going to be uh, everyone's going to be dealing with this, what, post-traumatic stress disorder. I'm trying to trick my brain into this post-traumatic stress growth. And we'll link that to your show notes as well. That's a cool. thing. Um, you know, if it doesn't, doesn't kill us, it makes us stronger. I'm, you know, guys, I got to trick my brain all the time into positive thoughts. Because we all know, we all know we can go negative like that. It's so easy. Yeah. It's so easy. It's so easy. Yeah. And quick yeah. too, you know. Oh, yeah. It happens fast. Yeah. I could downward spiral with the best of them. But just know this, when we speak about mental health, there's only two people I'm really speaking to. One, you may be around somebody who's going through a mental health crisis and just pick it up. Like, go with your gut. Just, Ooh, that, that didn't sound right. You know, you'd be better off without me giving stuff away. You're looking for these signs and we'll, we'll put the warning signs in the show notes. You may be around someone. The other person I speak to, it may be you. It may be you. You got to be mindful of what you're going through. Uh, classic examples, the airplane, you know, you, you, they always say, put your oxygen mask on first before you help others. Now, you know, how's your oxygen level? How's your mental health? Those are the only two people we're talking to on this podcast today. You may be around somebody or it may be you. And I've been both. That's great. Yeah, that's good advice. And we'll definitely grab those resources from you and put those in the show notes. Um, Mal, were you going to jump in there? Um, yeah, it's, it, it, it's maybe, maybe changing course a little bit, but I did, I did watch your TEDx talk that you did, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and something you brought up that I thought was really interesting was how people tend to have um, OCD, but you're not saying obsessive compulsive disorder, you're saying um, obsessive comparison disorder. And I kind of wanted to frame that into the context of 2020 
maybe even thinking about social media a little bit, how that might have worsened more recently. This is something we obviously think about uh, as marketers more often. But like, if, if you'd be willing to talk more about that, uh, I'd appreciate it. Sure. In my award-winning TEDx talk, and by award, I mean they gave they gave me a free glass of water when I was done. That was nice. <laughs> yeah. No, it was a good talk. It was loneliness, and I had to. I was, I was focusing on loneliness, and the pandemic kind of exacerbated everything I talked about because we're isolated. But that OCD, the obsessive comparison disorder, you know, you pick up our phones, and we used to scroll through, and it looks like everybody has a better life than you do because we put our highlights on that darn thing. That's our highlight reel. That's me on my best day at my best moment. It's not all like that, right, guys? It's not all Skittles and unicorns. Um, life has its ups and downs, and we, we tend not to put those on there. But again, I'm seeing more of it. So social media has a, a positive impact, like these podcasts. We're connecting through this. Um, you know, we've, we've all done the virtual meetings. There's ways to, you know, connect fa Facebook Messenger, Facebook Live, all this other stuff. There's a positive aspect to the connection, but for some reason, it seems like a shallow connection in my, in my personal opinion. Sure. It's not as deep as the face-to-face, -face, um, you know, like even now we're, we're doing this over the airwaves and over the internet, but we're looking at each other and your listeners won't see that, but I get to see the, the body language. Um, I get to see you guys yawning when I speak. Thanks. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, this is actually, we'll put the video out too for proof. So yeah, <laughs> they were not yeah, yawning. Not so watch that. out, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. So just be careful. I recently watched a couple things that rock my world. Um, one was the social dilemma on Netflix, how we're being targeted. You know, they said, if you're not, if you don't pay for it, you are the product. So I took off Facebook, Twitter and all that stuff off my phone. Now, remember, I have a business too. Uh, so I do go through the laptop and I imagine after the election, all this stuff, I'll go back on the phone and get back to being socially, you know, connected through the media to talk about, you know, the foundation I'm starting to, to get out there. It's a good way to get your message. It's a great way to get your message out there. For sure. Yeah. You can say one thing and, you know, thousands of people see it. Uh, but again, just be cognizant, Mal. You brought up a good thing. The OCD, obsessive comparative disorder, comparison disorder, where you're comparing yourself to others. And just know this, folks, everybody has crap days. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> they don't put those on the darn internet, but they're out there. Yeah, yeah. That's not as fun to, to showcase. <laughs> not at all. Definitely. Yeah. Well, Dennis, um, what have we not asked you that that you want people to know, you know, anytime you're speaking about this topic, um, anything we haven't covered that you want our listeners to know about? I think you guys covered a lot. I, you brought in uh, Mount. He was talking about what you're, you all doing with Movember and that, growing your, your beards and all that. So he's got a sweet stash going. Yeah. Mine Spencer, is really can't coming see in. Yours. Can't... No, I know. I need, I need like perfect lighting. You can see the three hairs that are gone. So <laughs> it's, it's, it, but there's been some, you, you emphasis on men's health. And I'll tell you two funny construction stories. You want to laugh a little bit on a mental health talk? I go to this construction business. It's hilarious. And I'm sitting in the back row. I felt bad for these guys. They're in this meeting. And I'm sitting in the back row. And one guy turns to the other guy and he looks at the agenda. And I'm up next, suicide prevention, Dennis Gillen. He turns to the guy in front of him and goes, I hope I don't commit suicide when this guy's talking. Well, first of all, we don't use the word commit. You heard me when I spoke. We don't use that in, a, in our bit. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Sure. The, the, I got a little steam. I'm like, you know what? That's the guy I need though. That's the guy mm -hmm. in the audience I need to, to hear me. He doesn't want to be there, but we need to talk about this. So every time I was speaking, I was making a great point. I was pointing right at that dude. I'm going right at him hard. It's like when you're <laughs> everything. 78% are guys and I'm pointing right at him. So at the end of the presentation, you know who came up to me afterwards? He, he did. He, it had to be him, right? It was not him. <laughs> oh, what? You no, set us up. Yeah. I did. But here's the deal. I, I set you up because when he pointed, when you, when you make a joke, there's a joker and the jokey. When he pointed to that guy who said, mm. he said, I hope I don't commit suicide during this presentation, that other guy came up to me and he told me a story when he was a young manager at a construction site that he came out of the shed one day and one guy was giving away all his tools. And he said, what's going on? And the guy was giving away his tools. He goes, that's not good. So he talked to the guy, we're having a rough period, marriage, alcohol, the whole nine yards, it's a perfect storm. So he took him home. And I, I started talking, I said, you took him home? He goes, yeah, I took him home. He slept on my couch for a while. And he goes, I was like a newlywed. I said, what'd your wife say? Oh, she wasn't too happy, but 
fast forward, the guy's still alive today. Awesome. So yeah. a, a, a construction manager stepped in, saw a guy giving away tools, which is the, you know, what's especially needed when you're a builder. You sort of need your tools. Yeah, you um, kind of do. Yeah. yeah. I'm not, way to go, Captain Obvious Strikes Again. But that was um, a wonderful story. And I think it made a point there that he observed something and he stepped in. Other guy, he could have went over and said, hey, what are you going to do with that hammer? You know, <laughs> I'll take that. And then, and then that guy never shows up at the job site. So that was, that was a good ending. That's amazing. Ending. Yeah. 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 That's great. Um, yeah. And you said you had another, another one. Yeah. I totally forgot it. I got so into that story. <laughs> I got so into that, the, the, the benefit of that one uh, that I forgot the other one. It'll come to me right after we hang up the podcast. I'll call yeah, you back. Exactly. And say, hey, you know, we're, we're the talking tape. about it was two funny yeah. stories. We're going to end on a high note. Yeah. And I only while, have one of them. While you're thinking about that, uh, if people want to, learn more about you or get connected with you, Dennis, what's the best way to, to do that? Sure. The best way to do that is to go to uh, Dennis and my website. I'm on the interweb and all that stuff with Instagram and all that Facebook Dennis Gillen speaker, but that's probably the best way you can go look at the Ted talk there. And that's going to be migrating. I'm, it's interesting. I'm migrating away from my own personal business because I'm trying to grow this bigger. I'm, I'm starting a foundation. So soon I'll announce that I'm starting this foundation. It's based on that proverb, you know, a shared joy is a double joy. A shared sorrow is half a sorrow. And we don't share our sorrows too much. Um, but the half a sorrow foundation will be rolling out hopefully by December. So there's a couple ways you get hold of me. I'm out there. Very cool. Uh, you can Google me. Yeah, we'll we'll type it into the old Google machine, see, the see what we find. But no, we'll we'll put those in the show notes as well for everybody. And I, yeah, I highly recommend you guys go check out the website. And and to be honest, like I before we hit record on this a couple of days ago, I went to the website, I read the story, and I mean, I mean, just awesome. un- unbelievable. I I'm I don't know you. I just met you. I'm reading the story, and I'm almost in tears, just like reading some text on a page and. So I, yeah, I just appreciate how you have navigated this. I can't even imagine. I I haven't been close to this topic. It's, um, it's something that, you know, I've gotten to know about since Mal kind of introduced us to the Movember movement. And um, we've really just kind of continued to push that forward because we've learned more about it and realized it's, it's a really impact impacting negatively this industry. And we, we do need to create more awareness around it so um and thanks for mal for doing that he brought it he brought it to light he saw a program that's out there and said hey we ought to do this and now your your company's aware of it and everyone asks you what you what's going on with the stash bro and you go hey this is what's going on with it i'm doing yeah. it for, men's, for men's health that's really cool mal and then mal's even uh the last couple of years he's gotten us to compete against another friendly agency and everyone's growing mustaches and walking and so you know he's he's taken it a step further than that as well um, but, uh, before we wrap Dennis, we, even though this was a little bit of a different episode, we still have to end with our classic, uh, fast five, which is where we're going to hit you with five rapid fire questions and, uh, just stay whatever comes to mind. Uh Oh, uh Oh yeah. So, <laughs> uh, first one is what's your, your favorite business book and why? Favorite business book. Uh, it's interesting. It's called execution because I have ADD and I don't execute. I have great ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I read execute. I'm like, I need to do all that. And then pew, there goes the idea. <laughs> it's actually over here somewhere. That's a good one. Yeah. I dust on it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. Who is the most inspirational person in your life? Right now, it's interesting. This guy I met through this motivational speaking. And when you, you open up your heart, wonderful people, when I told everyone about my brothers wonderful people flowed in when i was vulnerable wonderful people flowed in one of them is a guy named john o'leary he was burned over 90 percent of his body he has a book out called on fire he's probably mad that i didn't say that book first um but he's been really inspirational i listen to his podcast you know garbage in garbage out i can listen to all this crap i listen to john when i need to pick me up john o'leary out of st louis he's been really inspirational for me i've actually got to meet him live in person, in addition to doing, you know, some stuff with him. Just one of those guys that, wow, when I need to pick me up, I'm going to his podcast and saying, pick me up, bro. I'm, I'm not doing so good. Very cool. Very cool. All right. If you could have one superpower, what would that be? <laughs> I'm laughing because 
I said this the other day and my, my stepson looked at me and goes, that's the stupidest superpower ever. I was trying to reach something in the kitchen. I said, boy, if I had the ability to hover, he goes, not fly. I said, no, just hover. <laughs> so I get that yeah. darn dish down. He goes, yeah. that is the stupidest one ever. So I'm going to go I'll, I'll hover. just take half the superpower. Yeah, just give me the hover part of flying. Just hover. So I get that Tupperware down off the top shelf and everyone's cool. That's risk involved if you're not all the way in the sky. Uh, exactly. I, I understand it. Exactly. I'm an old guy. I can't be flying around around yeah yeah well i will say dennis that's the first time we've heard hover as the the selected answer for that one so <laughs> all right next next one up is describe yourself in three words a good guy i'm trying and, that, and that's on my tombstone you know he tried to be a good guy just a good guy yeah took a while to get here. I didn't tell you guys after Matt died, I told you about the drinking and all that stuff. I stopped drinking and I like myself now. I'm sober 26 years. Uh, I, That's awesome. I, I actually, by talking about my brothers, people have come to respect me when, when I was drinking and partying, nobody respected me and I was quite the a-hole. Um, but a, a good guy. I, I think I'm on my way and maybe I'm studying for the finals, trying to be a good guy and make up for all those teenage years. <laughs> <laughs> but this journey is awesome. I'm trying to coach people to stay in it because you can change and people, everyone, every, everybody's recovering from something and everybody loves a good comeback. I like so that. I, I think like I'm that. on the upswing. So a good guy, three words, a good guy. I like it. All right, Dennis, final question. If you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice, what would that be? Don't play leapfrog with the unicorn. <laughs> no, <that's not. laughs> <laughs> you know, I learned that. I always I'm forget about that horn. And I was like, hmm, that's probably really deep. Let me try that's to really, figure that out. It's really, that's very deep. That's as deep. I'm very shallow. Now, it's life, <laughs> life is worth living. Uh, see, it, see it through all the way to the end. Life is worth living. It, yeah, there are days, you know, it'll absolutely stink. But then you wake up the next day and see the sun come up over the east, sets in the west. Keep, keep at it. Life is worth living. That's a, that's a great way to end the show. Well, Dennis, we really appreciate you spending the time with us and yeah. Um, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, thank you very much for having me. And I appreciate you guys for taking on this subject. It's a little departure from your normal podcast, but it's one we all need to take every now and then. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Well, thanks again. And for everybody listening, remember we'll put all these resources in the show notes so you guys can dive a little deeper and definitely reach out to Dennis and uh, at least say hello and uh, that you enjoyed the conversation. Thanks again. As always, we'll see you next time here on Builder Funnel Radio.